Hello everyone, this is Brett and thank you for tuning in. Today's video is going to be 12 albums that I've listened to the most based on a thread that's going around the YouTube vinyl community. Before we dig in, if you're new to my channel and have yet to subscribe, please click the subscribe button and I look forward to interacting with you in the comments. So uh, I'm not quite sure where the thread originated, but I've been watching some of my friends here in the YouTube vinyl community do responses to this video and it seemed A, difficult and B, fun. So. 10 albums that I've listened to the most. There might be 11 in here, so I think I broke the rules a little bit. Um, I, tr I started off thinking I was gonna compartmentalize this maybe until let's say the last five years, but I decided to just go all in on it and do my, over the span of my entire life to the best of my recollection. So many great things um, had to get cut, um, uh, but let's just go in and, and uh, talk about it. We're gonna go in chronological order from when they were released Kicking things off with David Bowie's Diamond Dogs, 1974, by far my most listened to David Bowie album. Uh, has some of my absolute favorite Bowie songs, if not my favorite, The Sweet Thing, Sweet, with Sweet Thing, Sweet Thing Candidate, and uh, the reprise, reprise of Sweet Thing. Um, 1984, We Are the Dead, Big Brother, not to mention that this had the huge uh, hit Rebel Rebel on there. David Bowie's Diamond Dogs. Next up from the same year, released posthumously, this is Graham Parsons' second solo album, Grievous Angel. If you're unfamiliar with Graham Parsons, uh, he was a mem briefly a member of the band The Birds on the Sweetheart of the Rodeo album. He went on to form uh, the Flying Burrito Brothers with some of the members from The Birds, and then he released two solo albums and also helped to launch the career of Emmy Lou Harris. Uh, this was his second one, as I mentioned, has uh, Hickory Wind, which he wrote, which appeared uh, originally on A Sweetheart of the Rodeo. Um, has just some fantastic songs, Return of the Grievous Angel, um, Love Hurts, who um, everyone probably knows, if not the Nazareth version, possibly In My Art of Darkness, which is incredible, um, Brass Buttons, which is a total favorite song and one of my mom's favorite songs. Um, so yeah, Graham Parsons, Grievous Angel. Next up from 1976, this one had to be in there. Thin Lizzy's Jailbreak, I think this was their sixth album. Phil Lynott, uh, Running Back is my favorite song from here. Just a, that song always gets me. Of course you have the title track Jailbreak, uh, The Boys Are Back in Town, which I remember my dad playing for me and my brother. Cowboy Song, Warriors, Emerald, just a great album, Thin Lizzy. All right, up to 1979, um, I got into this album probably just in the late in the late 80s. It was really hard to find back then when I got it on cassette tape. Now it's everywhere. You see this image on T-shirts, but highly influential album to me as a musician as well. Joy Division's first album, Unknown Pleasures, opening track Disorder. I just remember playing this daily on cassette in my bedroom when I was in high school. Uh, she's Lost Control, I Remember Nothing, New Dawn Fades, great album. All right, next band. Uh, I could have chosen um, a couple of other choices, but I decided to just go with 1984's The Unforgettable Fire. Uh, just such a fantastic album. Ha My favorite song on this one is uh, a really deep cut called Elvis Presley in America. A beautiful song, Bad is Incredible, A Sort of Homecoming. The Unforgettable Fire Wire, MLK, pretty much the album. When I listen, when I think about listening to this as a teenager back in the late 80s um, and listening to a song like Bad really was the inspiration for, for my musical career. Um, so 1984, U2, The Unforgettable Fire. Next up, so uh, from the Jane's Addiction world, um, I think it's no surprise that I'm gonna include something and I could have included all three of the first Jane's Addiction albums, but I chose to go with Psycom. Uh, this came out in 1985. This was uh, Perry Farrell's band prior to forming Jane's Addiction. Uh, it was a, only a five song EP that they released. This is the reissue that came out in like 93 or 94 on Triple um, X Records. Uh, my friend Aaron Schur there on drums. Incredible post-punk, goth rock verging on. Perry sings in a lower voice, has the song um, Ziola, where you really hear his kind of falsetto start to emerge. But Human Condition is my favorite. 
along with City of Nine Gates, the opening track, Hokahe. This is now up on streaming, so if you're unfamiliar with SciComm, be sure to check that out. Next up, 1989, Shelley and Orphan, Century Flower, their second album. This just takes me right back to that time period. Just super emotional album. Uh, the late Carolyn Crawley, uh, Caroline Crawley on vocals. Um, Silent Day in the title track, Century Flower. Just absolutely incredible. Shatter, a few small hours. Beautiful album. If you're unfamiliar with Shelley and Orphan, definitely get that. All right, next up, uh, being in Arizona, this was a huge monumental album for you know, young musicians and, and seeing people that were in your vicinity becoming successful. And uh, that is the Gin Blossoms' new miserable experience. They're technically their, their major label debut, although some of the songs appeared on their own self-released album, Dusted, from three years before. Uh, what can I say about this album? It's so well-crafted. Doug Hopkins wrote uh, a good chunk of the songs. Great songwriter, Robin Wilson on vocals. Um, you know, when I when I drive through Tempe, Arizona, you know, these songs I hear in my head. I know I said this before, but um, it's just, you know, going to Arizona State University, the song Mrs. Rita, that was just down the street, sandwiched between Zia Records and Eastside Records uh, off of Mill and University, um, a uh, palm reader. Uh, songs Lost, the song opening track Lost Horizons um, is my absolute favorite. Um, hey Jealousy was a huge hit for them. Allison Road, um, Found Out About You is incredible. 29 Pieces of the Night, Hold Me Down. It's fantastic. I was fortunate enough back then when this came out, I feel like it was around August of 92. My brother and I went to the Tower Records that was in Mesa back then. And uh, the band was doing a, a little in-store performance and they played five or six songs for the album um, amongst 50 people or so. And... Um, Soon after that, they were on David Letterman, and then this album really, really blew up. So definitely a hugely important album. And not to mention that it was just an honor for me, uh, you know, back in 2008, recording uh, my band Audra's third album and having Robin Wilson uh, sing backing vocals on a couple tracks. So definitely came full circle on that. So Gin Blossom's new miserable experience. This next one is no surprise. Uh, James Laid, 1993. Uh, incredible album. Most people know James from the track Laid, but um, sometimes Out to Get You, Lullaby, Skin Diving, one of the three, just an incredible album from beginning to end, James Laid. If you're unfamiliar, only know one song, this is this is an incredible entry point. All right, next, next up. So I didn't include anything from Bauhaus, although um, you know the, many of their albums could have gone on this list as well. And I saw Brian uh, Embryonic Robot, his channel, had showed Peter Murphy's uh, third album, Deep, which is an incredible album. But my absolute favorite Peter Murphy album is 1995's Cascade. Uh, this album, I think, is just perfection. Uh, the, the production of it, the songwriting, is just absolutely stellar. Um, favorites on this one, Gliding Like a Whale, The Scarlet Thing in You, uh, Wild Birds Flock to Me. Um, it's just it's just an incredible album. Mirror to My Woman's Mind, Subway, just, just outstanding. We got to um, open for Peter Murphy one time and it was just absolutely incre incredible experience. So Peter Murphy's Cascade, 1995. All right, last one up, 1996. This is the third album, and I could have went with uh, either the first or the second one on this, but I decided to go with the third album from Suede, or as they're known in the United States, London Suede. This is coming up. This is the album that came after um, Bernard Butler's departure. I featured Richard Oakes on guitar. Absolutely outstanding songwriting. Tra it opens with Trash, Film Star, and Lazy, which are just three just upbeat, really poppy songs. By the Sea is incredible, beautiful ones. The Chemistry Between Us closes out with Saturday Night. Just an incredible album. So I think that was 11 records. So many other ones that I could have showed, but that gives you a nice little, um, a little um, snapshot at uh, 10 albums or more that, um, that I've listened to the most. Thanks for watching.